The Dungeon Master. It's a term that was trademarked by TSR in the early 70s after the second installment to the Chainlink rules titled Blackmoor. Since then, the title Dungeon Master, or DM, has taken several forms, with the most popular one being Game Master, or GM. Now, one needs to take several things into consideration before sitting in the DM's throne. And I'm just going to go over a few of them today. one needs to really take into consideration before becoming a DM is how much time do I personally have to commit to preparing for an adventure. Now, honestly, it does take a lot of time to prepare for a scenario or a campaign or a module, whichever term you're going with today. Now, the way I personally prepare is I'll sit down and I'll skim through a pre-written module, or I'll thumb through uh, an old issue of Dungeon Magazine and come across some of theirs. Now, I'll skim through it to see if that fits my uh, player's game style. Something you really need to take into consideration is not every player is fit for every adventure out there. Some do better with um, the spooky old manor sitting on top of the hill. And what's behind the sudden disappearance of, let's say, all the cattle or the blacksmith's daughter has come up missing? Well, others are more suited for an adventuring type campaign. Uh, say, as you chase the goblin who stole your wild rabbit stew, you suddenly come across an old man who's laying in the middle of the road, mumbling. And he says something about the woods are changing again. And just at that moment, you look up and realize that the canopy has changed and only dappled light is making its way through. So, do you try to find your camp? Or do you try to assist the old man back to his cabin before it gets dark while listening to his stories? Now, after reading through the module in full, I then take and print off a PDF copy. And this gives me a disposable copy of this module that I can write in. I can make notes. I can make additions. I can make omissions. I can mark all over the map if I want to. Uh, adding wandering monsters. Uh, completely getting rid of sections of the map or adding things to the map. You know, every little change will change the way the story plays out. Now, you really don't want to deviate from the main principle behind the story, but you also got to think, I need to make sure that this works. So you grab a handful of pre-generated characters, run them through, make sure that your changes make sense to the storyline. You know, you don't want to alter it too much. You don't want to make it too easy. You don't want to make it too hard. You don't want to make it to where, oh, this is so boring. Why do I want to go through this? They won't show back up for the next session. So you got to make sure it's effective for your players. Now, this will tell you several things at the same time. Uh, do I need to change it up a little bit more? Do I need to maybe make it a little bit easier if it's too difficult? You know, stuff like that will really make a difference. The second thing you need to do is make sure you've got something like this right here. This is a homemade Dungeon Master screen. It's got all the characters' abilities, you know, like turning tables for clerics, um, different thieving abilities, abilities for paladins, the fighter tables, all that. And they're, they're hit die in case the player takes their time and doesn't, well, where'd I put that on on my sheet? Also, it makes a really good idea to make uh, printed copies of your books. And let's say this one right here, the Unearthed Arcana. I printed this out from PDF a few weeks back. That way, you know, pizza fingers and jelly fingers don't get all over my books. And uh, nobody wants to replace a book because if you're playing first edition rules, 
you're going to be hard pressed to get another copy without paying through the nose on Amazon or eBay for it. Uh, another thing you want to do is uh, establish a session zero. We'll go over your house rules. Um, answer any questions that might come up. You know, because even if the same question comes up at every session zero, it don't matter as long as people are on the same page when you sit down to play the game. You know, make sure that you have a snack time set up. Uh, make sure you have a wrap up time. You know, also establish, hey, who's going to bring snacks? Who's going to bring drinks? That way the, the same person isn't going out of pocket every session. It's also important to know people's food allergies or diet restrictions. You've got to take that into consideration because, you know, with peanut allergies being on the rise, it really doesn't hurt to have yourself refreshed with your books. Dungeon Master's Guide. Monster Manual. Player's Handbook. Somebody's going to have a question about something. You can get those answers right there in those books. Even the Unearthed Arcana that you're going to pass around the table for pizza fingers and jelly drippings from their jelly donuts. Or maybe some might spill their soda on it. At least you're not going to ruin your hard copy. The last thing I would take into consideration right now is think about it for a minute. Every campaign that's ran is going to turn out differently than the previous campaign, even if it's the same campaign. It's your story. But the players are the actors in that story. And it's being written as they're playing it. You're not their executioner. So you're not going to systematically kill them off one by one and leave your little level one thief up against a tribe of bugbears. That's just ridiculous. You've got to make sure everybody is enjoying themselves. And if everyone's not having fun, you're not going to have fun. And if you're not having fun, it's going to reflect in the way you run your scenario. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.